Hello and welcome back to Probability Theory. Now, in today's part 17, we will talk about the so-called standard deviation for random variables. And indeed, this term is completely related to the variance we have discussed in the last video. There, please recall, the variance for a random variable measures how much the randomness deviates from the mean from the expected value. And now the standard deviation should do exactly the same thing. However, before we start with the definition, I really want to thank all the nice people who support this channel on Steady, via PayPal or by other means. And please don't forget, with the link in the description, you can download the PDF version and the quiz for this video. Okay, now back to the topic of this video, we will define the term standard deviation for a random variable. And now because you already know what the variance of a random variable is, this definition is very simple, it's simply the square root of the variance. So again, the variance tells us how much we fluctuate around the expected value, and now the standard deviation does exactly do the same thing, but now with the correct unit. For this, you should recall that in the definition of the variance, we used squares. And now with the square root here, we would correct the unit again. Okay, but to make this more precise, let's put all of this into a formal definition. So as always, what we need is a probability space and a random variable x defined on omega. However, now in order to define the standard deviation for the random variable x, we need an additional assumption for x. Namely, we need that the abstract integral of x squared exists. And as always, you should know how you can translate this abstract integral in the continuous case and in the discrete case. And then, if this is a finite number, we can define the following. It's a number written as a lowercase sigma. And usually, we write it as sigma of x. And now, as we have said before, this should be defined as the square root of the well-defined variance of x. Okay, and now this positive real number is called the standard deviation of the random variable x. And because we've already learned how we can calculate the variance, we can also calculate the standard deviation immediately. So what you use is the expectation of x squared, and then you subtract the expectation of x squared. And the only additional thing we have to do now is taking the square root of the result. And this gives us then the standard deviation. Therefore, you should see here, the properties we prove for the variance later also translate immediately for the standard deviation. This is good to know for all your calculations you will do. However, before we talk about these properties, let's look at some examples again. First, let's consider the one we also discussed in the last video, which was a discrete case with the uniform distribution. So you have n outcomes for the random variable and all have the same probability, 1 over n. And please recall what we have calculated is that the variance is given by 1 over n times the sum of these squares. This means the square root of this thing now is the corresponding standard deviation. And I would say it's always important to remember this formula here because this case often occurs. On the other hand, if you are in the continuous case, another case often occurs. It's called the normal distribution, also often called the Gaussian distribution. And indeed, it gets two parameters, mu and sigma squared. Okay, and now because this is a continuous case, we can give a PDF to define this random variable. So a probability density function we often call f with index x. And then for the variable, we often use a lowercase x. So this is an important distribution, so you also should remember it. First, it's 1 divided by sigma times the square root of 2 pi. So this is just a constant one needs, and then we have times the exponential function. And there we have the factor minus 1 half times a fraction squared. And in this fraction, we have x minus mu divided by sigma. So both parameters here are inside the exponent of the exponential function. Okay, now we will do the calculations later, but here I can already tell you that the expectation of the random variable is exactly mu. And on the other hand, the standard deviation of x is sigma. 
Obviously, this is the reason we call the constant sigma here. Now, to visualize this important normal distribution, let's open our studio again. First, let's open the help function by typing question mark r norm. There we have everything about the normal distribution and there you can see the mean is simply called mean and the standard deviation is called SD. And there of course you also find the probability density function fx. And exactly this one we already know and now we want to draw it. So we use the term d norm. And there let's start with the mean equal to 0 and the standard deviation equal to 1. And now we can plot the whole thing by putting the command curve in front. And then at the end we have to say what is the domain for x. So we write from minus 3 to plus 3. And then hitting enter gives us the plot. So what we immediately see here is we have a symmetric curve where the highest point corresponds to the mean at 0. This means if we shift the mean by maybe 1, we also shift the curve. Moreover, on the other hand, you should see the width of the curve should correspond to our standard deviation. In order to see this, let's push the graph back to the original form at 0 and maybe let's increase the domain as well. So from minus 5 to 5 now. And now you should see here the width of the curve here in the graph corresponds to the standard deviation of 1. In other words, now if we increase it to 2, you should see it. So you see, the curve fattens up. Moreover, the highest value also goes down, because you know, the whole integral under the curve should be 1. In addition, let's see what happens when we decrease the standard deviation to 1 half here. And for comparison, we also should go from minus 5 to 5 here. So it's a much higher curve now, but also thinner. Okay, at this point I can tell you, if you use the add command, add equals 2, in our curve function here, we can add another function. So maybe now let's go with the function where the standard deviation is 1. In the same way, we can add the other function where the standard deviation was 2. And indeed, you can also use different colors. You just type color equals 1. This is the first color, which is always black. The second color you can see is red. So you see, this is how you can make your whole plot. And maybe you can compare all the Gaussian functions here. So in summary, you should see the standard deviation here tells us how fat and low the whole function is. Moreover, how we can do the exact calculations for this continuous case here, I show you in another video. Therefore, I hope that I see you there and have a nice day. Bye.